Dancing Through Fields of Color, The Story of Helen Frankenthaler by Elizabeth Brown, illustrations by Amy Sekiro. At a time when girls were taught to sit still, learn their manners, and color inside the lines, Helen Frankenthaler colored her reds, blues, and yellows any which way she chose. Helen never wanted to follow the rules. When her mother called her to the dinner table, Helen continued painting watercolors of the sunset shining through the apartment window. Instead of going to bed, Helen filled the sink with water. She dribbled in drops of ruby red nail polish and watched the color flow. When she let the water out, she loved to watch the color swirl into shapes. During summer vacations, Helen let the waves whoosh and whirl around her, sailing her body through the tides. When her father called her ashore, she wanted to keep circling, twisting, floating, forever wrapped in the blue-green colors of the sea. While her older sisters were in school, Helen spent her days with her mother, who nurtured her dreams. Helen read and wrote stories, made collages, and created designs with glass beads circles, hearts, and stars, in brilliant colors. She painted pictures and cards for birthdays and anniversaries, filled with all the colors of happiness, purple, yellow, and pink. Helen's father worked long days as a judge. She couldn't wait for him to come home each day. He took her wherever she wanted to go. Most of all, Helen loved taking walks with her family in Central Park. She ran under the welcoming sky, waltzing, twirling, leaping, across the lush green fields and played hide and seek among the flowering trees. When it was time to go, Helen took the colored chalk she had stuffed in her coat pockets and drew a line from the front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art through the park, across the street, and through the crowds, around the corner, all the way Home. The colorful line connected the two things she loved most. Helen's parents always encouraged her to blossom, express herself, paint free. In art class at school, Helen wanted to do things her way, but she had to follow the rules in order to pass. Don't sketch that way. Draw like this. Paint what you see. Helen pleased her teachers when she sketched figures, drew chairs, and painted flowers in Paris, like all the other students. But she wished for something different. Helen found comfort in painting seascapes. The blues and greens reminded her of summer days with her family at the beach. She made pictures of her trips to the country, with bursts of orange gold paints that warmed her face like the sun. Soon, Helen's happiness disappeared entirely. When she was 11, her father died. Helen missed him so much that her sadness caused pounding headaches. She struggled in school. Helen tried painting, but nothing came out. Her canvases remained blank, her world of colors and light dark. But colors lived in her mind, floating and shifting like shapes she made it in childhood. Staring at every color in her paint box, memories came back to her. Periwinkle, the feathery whisper of her father's encouragement. Ochre, the warmth of her father's hand as they strolled in the country. Cobalt and crystal, the summers splashing in the ocean's waves. Helen began to paint again, and eventually, art healed her. Helen followed the rules well enough to succeed in school and go to college to study painting. Her professor wanted colors separated with thick black lines. Her brush marks and planes arranged across her canvas to create depth and space. Helen loved college, but longed to paint what she felt inside. Painting feelings couldn't be contained in black lines or organized into clear shapes or objects. Helen dreamed of setting her colors free like she was as a child, running without boundaries. She searched for more. After college, Helen moved back to New York 
where many artists were exploring forms, lines, and shapes differently. They overlapped bands of color, thought more about geometry, and painted larger and larger pictures. Helen met an artist named Jackson Pollock, whose paintings hung in museums and galleries. The art world called him the greatest living painter in the United States. Reviewers celebrated him. Fans loved him. When Helen saw his work, she marveled at how he splattered and dripped his paints on the canvas tacked to the studio floor. If he broke the rules, why couldn't she? Helen exhibited her work in small shows while male painters were given larger exhibits. Critics called Helen's work too sweet in color, too lyrical, too ladylike. She worked longer and harder at her paintings, drawing strength from her memories of the country and sea. She wanted to leap into her colors, feel the colors, and be the colors. Art never let her down. Helen traveled to Nova Scotia to get away. As she walked through the fields, colors swirled around her. Cerulean blue and coral cascaded down mountains of saffron and gold. Rose, pink, and lavender rippled across the sky. Spring green and vermilion gushed through the sea waves. Helen felt the countryside move within her body. She saw the mountains with her arms. She heard the sea in her wrist. Could she paint the beauty she saw all around her? Could color be the painting? Helen grew brave. Back home in New York, Helen laid a huge canvas on the floor. She put down her brush. Helen blended red and yellow to make orange. Blues and yellows became greens. She mixed and mixed and mixed rainbows. Helen swirled charcoal lines across her canvas to guide her like the chalk lines she drew as a girl in the city. With a fistful of pink, Helen turned her wrist outward and spread the paint, streams of color racing and spiraling, the paint soaking into the canvas, like rain seeping into soil. Helen grabbed a bucket of crimson and poured, setting her colors free. They ran and rushed. The colors turned into memories. Helen imagined the mountain peaks of Nova Scotia with her arms. She remembered the sea's waves with her wrist. With the sweep of her arm, she splashed green like sea foam. Colors jetted across the painting, merged and connected like rivers into oceans, colors into feelings. Wherever the paint landed was the perfect place to be. Grabbing a nearby mop as her partner, Helen promenaded through puddles and pools of paints, pushing and pulling her colors together. Oranges and reds tangoed, corals pirouetted, pinks plied, yellows and blues sashayed, winding, turning, spinning. When she was done, Helen danced in that field, free among all the shimmering colors of her life extending, reaching beyond the painting into forever.